Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. Night Vision. I pray that these next episodes will provoke you very deeply to understand the need for night vision because in the dark hour of our own dealings that God has to come to for us and our preparation and then what it would mean for us to be able to walk with others, this is very, very necessary. Take a listen, let it provoke you, and let him get you ready. Love you all. Night Vision 3.0. So let's pick up where we left off in our conversation last episode and really look at the night vision that's required when you're in the dark dealings of God with you and in the dark dealings of God, if you will, uh, in others. I talked about that in this midnight shift, the midnight to 6 a.m. shift, uh, when you are being dealt with, let's say, ahead of a great um, shift when God himself is moving. Remember, over the many last weeks and months, I've talked about holy shift. Zechariah 2.13, quiet everyone, shh, silence before God. Something's afoot in his holy house. He is on the move. This isn't the same as there is a, a move of God, meaning a certain characteristic Uh, We're talking about the restoration of all things unto God. God himself is on the move and it is the fullness of what it is that he is after for himself. He created you in Christ, in love, before the foundations of the world for himself. He told Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, I've provided a king for myself. God has done all. And he is now working in his sons in this hour of history. And, you know, recently I've heard a couple of things that um, confirm what I've been hearing from the Lord for a long period of time. And then he's been getting much more specific with me in an accelerated way over the last days and weeks in my own life and in what he's showing me uh, about what he's doing what he's about to do. So he begins in his house and then in his house, he begins with lead sons. And we have come to a point where almost the word leadership is just almost ruined. Now the functioning of a leader, one who's going before others and making a way, right? Of course, we know that that is is still present and and so necessary that others would go in for themselves so that they can become a big wide open door for God to be able to move in his people, uh, to be a way for people to be reconciled to God. Uh, So we know those things, but I've shared many, many times, uh, and I'm I'm tonight uh, when I record this. Now, when you hear this, it'll be a few days after, but as I'm getting Uh, ready tonight uh, to open up uh, Cross Encounter in Iowa, I, each time that I begin to step into Cross Encounter and I, I get up close, you know, to the opening of it and, and, and watching God begin to, to draw people to himself. I talk about that God has called us, according to Romans 5, 17, to rule with him. And that the very first place we have to learn to be rulers is not for territories, but it is within our own selves. Will we really come under the government of God? This night vision I'm speaking of, the deep dealings of God in a time where it may seem like just nothing but dark clouds for you, but be be certain God is very, very clear uh, when he is maturing his sons, drawing them to himself, preparing them for the hour in which they live to move in deep oneness with him, that that darkness will dissipate eventually and you will get very clear and you will see as he sees. 
and you will be uh, in that time of exposure, you will be brought into great conviction so that you can be brought into great agreement with your father and that you can move. And, and so this is a, a very important time for us to, and I, and I heard something recently and I said, okay, I'll, I think I'll just emphasize this again as I'm hearing others that are preparing people in the body of Christ is that we're being called to rule alongside God now, that is not, if you know anything of the dealings of the Father, uh, He's not bringing you into a place where you're going to lord over people or it's some kind of destroying militant power. We're talking about the government of the kingdom of God in the hearts of people where He begins to rule them in love, discipline, in a sound mind and self-control so that we can walk with the Father, so that the enemy can, yes, be dispossessed, so that God, upon that which belongs to him by the finished work of Jesus, can now come to him, be restored to him. So this rulership, this uh, way of not just being leaders who get so blown up about themselves, right, where the whole thing goes off the rails. We're talking about sons who have been broken, right, broken by uh, the father, just like Peter, uh, broken and devastated to find out that all their religion, like Saul, who became Paul, had to find out. There are many aspects of the way that God begins uh, and continues and furthers that work of maturing inside of his sons. And I want to give just a few thoughts about that today because night vision, right, is very key. When you begin to see, when it may seem dark to others, there have to be those lead sons who come into a place of deep ruling. Romans five seventeen, you can see it in Isaiah 32. Uh, there are places within the scripture where if Holy Spirit is not ruling us, right? We're not here build, building our kingdoms. It is his in the hearts of people. And when he rules them in life and love, and he is maturing them, they're learning his ways, they're going to walk differently. Romans 6 says that we conduct our business and we walk and behave in newness of life, my friends. This is not going to be uh, leadership as we have known it, right? This isn't going to be, uh, I, I have so many examples I could bring, but I, I want to use ones from the scripture, and show you some of these elements of when sons really begin to um, fight the real fight of their life, the fight of faith. Who will they trust and depend upon? Who will rule them? And then coming into that place of seeing all things from the father's point of view. And, and then because of that, they actually begin to function in, in his state of mind and really truly think like him, agree with him, come into agreement with his judgments so that there can be a deliverance that only the cross of Jesus Christ can bring where we are delivered from self and unto him. And then to begin to mature and to begin to walk with him through many seasons, right? You, you finally begin to realize, I'm, I'm not here trying to arrive at a particular place. I'm walking with my father, and, and being with him is the only motivation for me to continue and persevere, to suffer, to endure, to discern anything. We serve at the pleasure of our Father. Only he can produce this breed of sons. And so I, I know there is a massive shift in the provoking process of real discipleship that is about sonship, which is about the Father. And there will be a company of jealous sons who are glad-hearted and trustworthy because the life of Jesus within them was developed. This is not your natural skills, your natural goodness, your natural morality. All of that is going by the wayside. And yet there are those within the scripture that we can look at and we can begin to realize they went the way of Christ and so can we. And I pray that you will. And there are certain things they just will not tolerate. And so I want to share 
this in an hour and a time when the Father is being required and he's, he's going to do what is necessary, what we have required. Uh, a circle of exposure is going to have to become larger and larger because we resist him in private. We resist our brethren when they come to us to, to speak to us. We continue to build our fortresses of fleshly defense and blaming others and even going into narcissistic lying. It's all just self, my friends. It's all flesh. I mean, we may think that we have gotten all these new names to call it, but we must call it what the scripture calls it. And it is self. And it is the avowed enemy of the father and is determined to live independent from him. But if you don't have night vision that was highly honed and skilled and sharpened because of his dealings with you, you won't be able or willing to be able to see when he's doing it in others for the sake of what he's doing and for his kingdom um, and for the going forth of his will in this hour. And so anyway, let me, let me just share some of these thoughts. Now remember, this is not a dignified teaching, right? This is provoking conversations that we're having. And I just want to share these with you in these few remaining moments of night vision 3.0 is I look first at Abraham and it says in Genesis 13 and 14, it talks about how Abraham, who had gotten word about his nephew Lot and he goes out and he goes to war and and uh, and he he is on his way back and he's in the valley of kings if i remember it and and um he's coming back from war with the people and all the stuff all the stuff i'm assuming livestock and monies and he is coming back loaded and he has the people and he's making his way back and he comes into the valley of kings and melchizedek Oh, my friends, please take note. Melchizedek steps forward, the king of righteousness and of peace. You can read about him in Hebrews 7. One who has no beginning of days and no end, who has no lineage, no mother, no father. Humanly speaking, my friends, it's Christ himself steps forward. It also says the king of Sodom steps forward, the devil. And it says that Melchizedek offers to Abraham bread and wine. Oh, the covenant. Hmm? The covenant of his own body and his own blood offered to Abraham there in the early chapters of Scripture. The king of Sodom says to Abraham, listen, okay, now I want you to hear this. Because this has been and is currently the whisper of hell to leaders. This is what the king of Sodom says to Abraham. Hey, you keep all the stuff. Just give me the people. Ooh, my friends, do you know how many have given up the people as just open prey to the enemy because they took all the stuff? And they began to think that being a leader was about all the stuff. Here is what Abraham said. In that moment, he did receive from Melchizedek the bread and the wine, the covenant of God. And he says, basically, um, this is how it reads in the Amplified Classic. He says, to the king of Sodom, I wouldn't take anything from you, not even a shoelace, so that it would not be said that you had made me rich. And that he gave a tenth of all the spoils unto Melchizedek. You see, my friends, the enemy is ever circling the sons in many seasons of their life to say, listen, just keep the stuff. Give me the people. But when Abraham, right, he's showing the sign of one who's being ruled, ruled by God himself. He made it clear and he made his decision. He wasn't cutting any deals with the devil. Hmm? Now, I know many of you are thinking, yeah, but then he did this and he did that. Yes, he did. <laughs> right. I understand. Right. Just like with David. Yes, 
Yes, but I want you to catch this, that in that moment and in that valley of decision, Abraham made it clear who his God was and that it was God, the greatest, the greater, who did all that was necessary and offered to Abraham to enter into that covenant. We also see again, I bring up Samuel, Samuel the prophetic. And he was with Saul and had much affection for Saul. But when there comes that moment, is shall I move with man or God? This comes to all the lead sons in the, in the night seasons of their life and that they might have night vision as they prepare and get ready. They're not confused anymore about what's going on. And they've been dealt with very, very deeply in themselves. And God says to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn over things I have rejected? Fill your horn with oil. We're going to Jesse's house because I have provided for myself a king. So in that moment, Samuel had to make a decision. There, he was fearing Saul. He was fearing man. Uh, there were all manner of things going on. But in that moment of decision, Samuel broke towards the Lord and went with him. This is one of my uh, most um, penetrating examples. Oh, this is going to have to happen, my friends. This is going to have to happen. And this night vision is being sharpened and, and, and God is revealing things and he's exposing things and there is much that needs to be done. I believe it's in Acts 14, 12 through 22. <laughs> this, is, this is mind blowing. And we need the mind of the flesh blown, right? So the mind of Christ, the true night vision of all time, right? We'll be able to come in and, and if I'm, if I'm, I, I hope that I'm getting the story correct. Um, so there's Paul and I believe Barnabas and uh, something had just happened and they had seen that a man, it said that he was ripe for healing, that he had faith to be healed. And so they, they prayed for him. He was healed and, and the, the people began because there was all kinds of things going on with the people prior and the prior verses uh, many things that were said against Paul and Barnabas and people that were responding to them. People wanted to do all kinds of things to them. And yet in this moment, when the man was healed, suddenly uh, they, they began to cry out about Paul and Barnabas uh, and call them, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, but it's okay, Hermes and Zeus, H-E-R-M-E-S, and Zeus, Z-E-U-S. You can see this in the scripture. And it says that they began to cry out, and what these names meant were the messenger gods. Oh, oh, Father, come right now while people are hearing this. Messenger gods. And the people began to just worship Paul and, and Barnabas. It says one of the priests of Zeus came and brought the bulls and they were going to sacrifice and they had flowers and they were going to have a parade. And it says when Paul and Barnabas realized, okay, so it takes a little while sometimes to realize, to realize what was actually happening. Basically what they said was stop the parade. Stop it. Oh, my friends, sons who are about to be rulers of themselves and rulers in life with the father for his purposes and on his behalf and the kingdom really coming are going to have to tell people stop the parade you will not worship us we are men just like you it says we are here to lead you to the one true god listen to me, my friends the day that you finally stop the parade you might not be able to control how people view you and they love you and they think you're amazing and all of that, but there's going to come a jealousy inside of you and you know, I'm not sharing, the, I'm, I'm not going to steal the glory. Stop the parade. Stop all of that. 
because I'm leading you to the one true living God. We are not messenger gods, but we are his messengers. But have we been made the message that we preach? Have we allowed him to deal with us? All right. In the dark night, when we finally have to see exposed what self is right, that we allow him to deal with the ego by the cross of Jesus Christ. So we are not going to take the goods and leave the people. We are not going to fear man and try to hold on to our uh, prophetic um, things. We are not going to try to provide for God something. We are not going to let people throw parades for us. We are going to be a company of jealous, trustworthy, and glad-hearted sons who are going to cut no false covenants, my friends. This is a word God gave me back in 2004, that the enemy was trying to cut false covenants with the sons of God, bring them false spiritual fathers, bring them into adultery, bring them into... Uh, the moment that God is beginning to lead them, they start getting offers for new lucrative jobs and this and that and all manner of things that they begin to cut false covenants and bring people to worship them. These things, my friends, God is done with it. And if you have night vision, you're going to be able to see what I'm talking about. But first, it has to happen in you. My, my, my how the Father has provided for himself, and he will have sons in this hour who will fight the real fight, who will be one with him, who will receive his love at such a depth that they want no other gods before them, and they certainly don't want to be messenger gods themselves. So I leave you with this, my friends. Let's have night vision I put out the call. I'm put out the call. You know, you're willing to work the midnight to 6 a.m. shift and to see things before others do, my friends. Don't think that makes you elite and some kind of God to be worshipped. It means he's going to pummel you. He's going to deliver you from you and unto himself. And you're going to be clear. And I believe it's almost like the sky will be darkened. There will be so many suns being sent out that the arrows that are being shot out on assignment with him, it's going to be a massive sight for those who can see. Let him deal with you, my friends, as he brings you into his life, his love, his mind, his nature, and you live as one with him, and you're going to be very glad about the fact that he's the source of everything that you are and everything you will ever do. And it is for him. I love you all. Until next time. Thank you for listening today. Before we go, I have one final ask and a new bit of info. If you like our content here at Tent Talk, hit the share button to tell someone about it and subscribe at nancymccready.com forward slash podcast so you don't miss another episode. Also, be sure to look in the episode notes and see where you can download the conversation guide. There you will find questions and you will be able to use those with your friends, your team, your small group. And we hope that it really does provoke you deeper into your process of life with him. All of our podcasts here at Tent Talk are listener supported and your gifts at nancymccready.com are greatly appreciated. Thanks for joining me here and I look forward to our next time together.